that just because somebody of great stature is doing it doesn't make it right. Right. So I'm going to take what I think is right from somebody else and try to apply that to my business and act like that person and try to duplicate that is just illogical to me. All right. Because All right. when I see it, I'm like, well, you're just like this guy. So why am I going to do business with you? So my job as a person in promotion is really, where are you? And what do you have to say? And how can we say that? For me, marketing and promotion, 80% of that is communication. 20% is the actual mechanical delivery. All right, guys, welcome to episode four. Oh, yeah, do I have four? That's three fingers. If I do four, I can't put my four of the Make More Money podcast. I'm very proud to uh, bring you uh, Robert Cicillo. This guy of Cicillo Ventures is CEO. Uh, he's doing a million dollar business, but on top of that, his story on how he went from um, broken to where he is, this is this is me. And you can tell I didn't even care. I care about my hair now. I'm going to Vegas for growth con really quick. Um, and that's where we're getting. I actually got a pack. My dad's driving me. That's why I'm at my dad's house here. Um, by the way, oh, shout out to the comment by Happy Days. Happy Days won the comment. She commented on the Bradley video, which Robert Sissel has uh, voted uh, for. I'm going to read it here. Maybe I'll put up the picture. Love this interview. I learned so much. I love the things Bradley says. I had to write some of them down for myself. And she goes on about how she loves me. Listen, whoever or he, whoever Happy Days is, you won comment of the day, DM me at Jeff the Entrepreneur. Guys, I want to see comments as well on this episode two see your take on it um also robin hood man we've been given a little uh stocks i know uh, my buddy comeback cam just told me he invested in it, so i'm gonna put my link down there in robin hood check it out be like a little uh you know a thief in the night or whatever robin hood was man and click that link i'll make some money you'll make some money get a money mindset on there use some of the tips we've heard of robert Cislo. are you working a job do you really need to take uh take it on and take it on for yourself like he did hear the struggles listen to it sit back relax and enjoy this guy is polished he is good and i look like i just woke up not now but in the video so stay tuned All right, it's Jeff J here to make your day. Welcome back to the Make More Money podcast. I am excited to bring you a guest today, guys, uh, who has actually been somebody uh, for the that I heard during my journey when I started this before he spent time to talk to me on the phone, gave me some advice. I took his advice. So, um, a lot of these, you know, we have, you know, Brad Lee coming on, which I think he's worked from with that, uh, we'll hear about as well. Um, but, and we have, we're having Grant on in March, but this guy, um, his name is Robert Cislo Jr. of, uh, Cislo Ventures. Love the name of it. We're going to get more into that. But before hearing me talk, uh, Robert, you want to give my listeners just 60, 90 seconds of kind of what you are and what you do right now? Yeah, of course. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. This is awesome. I love communicating. I love doing podcasts. And anytime I can share, you know, my viewpoint and uh, story, I think it's absolutely wonderful. So uh, currently right now, I own a business called Cislo Ventures, and it is a production and marketing agency. Uh, we do everything from website design to video production to marketing, branding, um, advertising. We have a training course on how to do promotion and marketing. And, uh, you know, everything is geared around communication. Uh, I'm not really big on, hey, let's, I, when I talk to people, it's not about Facebook ads. It's about what are we talking about to people and how are people receiving that information. So that's my whole spiel. And that's what I really focus on is doing entire brand makeovers, creating and getting people in the right direction with their marketing and how they should communicate and raising the level of aesthetics of any business owner, entrepreneur um, out there. I mean, right now I'm working with Brad Lee on that. I'm working with Bobby Castro on that oh, and wow. some other big companies around the uh, entire world. So it's, it's a lot of fun and it's awesome. That's Great. my 69 second run. No, 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 and that's awesome. It's very impressive to see this uh, launch. Now, Cislo Ventures, when I first got it, now being the software developer in my niche, I've been hit on by so many uh, venture capitalists. Cislo Ventures, you're not, a, you're not a venture capitalist by any means, are you? No, I'm not. Right. So if you actually look up the definition of the okay. word ventures. Which is something that I usually do and I didn't. That's yeah, so the actual definition of ventures means a risky or dairy, uh, daring journey or undertaking 
dare to do something or go somewhere that may be dangerous or unpleasant. Right. You're just willing to go. Right. Um, okay. The actual deriv derivation of that is in the sense adventure. Right. So, you're, so yeah, you're, 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 all right. Now with everything I've seen and now where I first found it is through, through, uh, you know, my first mentor, Grant Cardone, you know, back then we had a phone conversation when he kind of um, helped me when I was having a tough time uh, on phone, took time, talked to me. But um, where did you kind of start from? Because I remember asking you like, oh, did you know, you didn't, you just got the job. So let's go back to kind of when you're young, because you have this artist way about you, right? You're yeah. an entrepreneur now out there competing for business with everybody in the world. What a lot of people would say, man, artists don't make a lot of money, um, and, and, you know, because it's so hard to get so creative, right? Uh, but then you're sitting here, you know, and you seem to do pretty well for yourself, right? I make so, a lot of money. Yeah. So, <laughs> so let, let's talk about kind of when you started, like um, in, in high school or young kids, like young 16, 18 year old kid wants to start his own business. Uh, where were you when you were 16, 18 years old? Kind of? uh, well, I was in high school yeah. and uh, was going through a very difficult time in my life. My parents were going through a divorce and right. I was just an emotional wreck. I had no parental guidance. I had no like, hey, this is how you should do relationships. Or hey, this is an entrepreneur. Or hey, this is business. Or hey, this is that. I never had uh, that direction of where to go. But what I did have was music. And I loved music so much that I would use my imagination all the time. And I would, I would actively seek out music that you know, people wouldn't listen to, and I still do that today. I don't listen to anything mainstream. I'm kind of weird like that, but you're an artist. I'm an artist. Yeah. So what that allowed me to do was to kind of escape in a way while being where I was. And I loved the ocean. I'd always go to the ocean all the time. But so we had a project to do in high school. I was like, I don't know, soft junior year or something like that. And we had to film the 1960s, like all the events that took place in the 60s. So I filmed it. It was just, a, you know, something silly. And um, I took it to these guys. We had a media channel in our school in the morning. We had a news program. And I said, I need you guys to edit this together. Like, can you cut this up? They're like, sure. And I sat with them and I watched them do this. And I was like, oh shit, this is what I want to do. Can I curse? I won't. I won't I'll yeah, we, 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 we can have them edit it out later. Try, try and hold it back. I'll I keep always it forget PG. to tell people that just because we're trying to get you YouTube. I'm not making the money you're making right now. So I'm trying to get you a little YouTube. I will habit. not do it. I'm sorry. So, so no, I'll, I apologize. I won't do that. Um, so I watched these guys do this and I said, oh my God, this is so much cool. They're creating a story. They've created communication. And I, the next year I got involved, I, re I learned how to do editing. I learned how to do production. And then I was like, this is what I want to do. Um, so at 16, I would take movies and ads and I would recut them the way that I thought that they should be. Right. So everything that I do was self-taught. Like I, I went into Final Cut Pro at that yeah. time and I, I learned all the stuff and I made the mistakes and I did everything and I just taught myself how to create stories and create really unique videos. Like I was always instinctively knowing of what looked good, what sounded good, what was impactful. Like I just knew it. Yeah. In a past life, I was a director somewhere. I don't know. But the point of the matter is, is that I just knew and that's what I love to do. And it was fun for me. So that's what was going on then. And that's so, what I really like. And that, that's crazy. So and a lot of people can relate to that. I think nobody ever has the perfect life. Right? Some people have been, you know, in divorced families. My mom and dad talked to divorce. My mom died when I was young. Uh, you saw the video with me and Grant and my brother and everything, right? So my dream is to open a coffee shop music studio because similar to you is I think one thing that heals everybody is a music in a certain way and everybody has different forms. I don't like the most genre main music. Obviously, if I'm doing it you know, as a dream, I'm going to need to reach out. But artists are someone that are just have something that I don't have, the creative ability. You know, I have more of that sales niche, the entrepreneur niche stuff, but you, you need more of um, kind of what you have to the world. So going through all that stuff... Um, and kind of what I, the question I was kind of following up on this was like, um, you then got, so you threw yourself all an obsession to become a creator with video editing. Is that kind of where it went from? No, I really messed up my life actually. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I went to college and I was trying to sort things out. Um, I did have an internship in New York city right out of high school. That was kind of cool. I worked for a big, uh, 
feature film company. Okay. And I analyzed scripts and was basically the errand boy. But, you know, at 18, I was commuting from everybody else was in college and, you know, doing their thing. And I'm, I'm commuting from South Jersey to New York City three times a week with no money just right. to take his experience because yeah. I was like, this is more important than anything else. And so, um, so that was like the smart thing. And then I moved to New Mexico right after that. At, that was around 2008. And in 2008, the state of New Mexico had tax incentives for film production. So the entire film industry was like New Mexico and Thor was shot there. No country for old men. There will be, but all these like movies were just shot. Breaking Bad was literally filmed in the neighborhood that I lived in across the street from my house. So it, it, there was just so much happening, but I could never like connect. I was like going to college because I thought I needed money and I didn't know how to make money, but I would practice my editing like all the while I was practicing. And then um, I don't know where you want me to go with this, but I'll just go with it. Uh, yeah, go, keep going. Um, around yeah. 2009, 2010, YouTube became a thing like it was like it was around but it was like a thing now right and yeah, that's there was right. a company that i saw an ad for that was basically looking for local filmmakers to go make ads for businesses oh, okay. and i was like you know what i can do that let me just do this wow. so they hired me i was paid no money i was paid like <laughs> 225 dollars, and they're like okay cool john's pizzeria needs an ad go film it edit it and get it uploaded in 24 hours i was mm -hmm. like 24 hours. All right, cool. Damn. So that's how I built my portfolio. And I went from no portfolio to a portfolio of 250 video ads in like four months. Wow. It was ridiculous. And then a later job came from NBC Universal and uh, Hilton. And they were like, we are doing an entire profile on the state of New Mexico. You are the only filmmaker we have. We need you to go to 75 high-end luxury hotels and, um, you know, resorts, casinos and uh, restaurants and trap. Like I hiked a damn mountain, yeah. three mile hike with all my camera gear to get one shot on top of the mountain for the ad. And so wow. I was working at Apple and I quit my job and I went and I did this. So wait, you worked for Apple for a little bit? I did. I worked for Apple because I wanted to get trained and certified in the, in the editing uh, programs by Apple. What, what did you think of their training? Uh, fly? I don't know if it's changed since then, but one of my friends worked. What do you think of their onboarding process? When I was there, I don't know what it is now, but yeah. when I was there, it was the simplest and coolest indoctrination into a culture ever. Like I was, I was excited to be there. I yeah. was like, let's go, let's do it. And you were having fun. Like, yeah. For me, working for Apple was like a thing. I was yeah. like, dude, I'm cool. I'm a, I'm a genius. I'm a creative. Literally, <laughs> yeah. I was a creative. Yeah. Well, you was kind of are a genius, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So but Apple does have that. No, people do have that feeling. So I was, I was just wondering if it was the same back in, what was that, 2009? Yeah, that was like 2009. So I worked there for a couple of years. I mean, I've just, my whole life. Is just a series of like, let's do this, and then that didn't work. I'm disconnecting. Let's yeah, that, do this. That's I'm what I want to hear because it made you what Cisco Ventures is now and what everything is. So worked for Apple, right? And then you also worked for um, who was it? You said what, what was the job that Universal or something? You had to go up to a mountain and get a, a shot. Yeah, it was NBC Universal and Hilton. So they did a combined uh, program where they were you know running promotions for the entire, everything you could do in New Mexico. And I, I filmed all the ads for that. And, now back, and, back then though, you were getting, you were employed by them and you weren't getting paid what they're getting paid now for you. you they paid that. me, I think six grand to do that. And mm -hmm. I was like, I've never made $6,000 before mm -hmm. I'm rich. And I was just like, you know, yeah. and, and then I did it. Um, but then after that, like I just, then after that, I kind of, you know, I moved to LA. I was in a relationship. The relationship was bad like it, it just yeah. broke me down so much yeah tell me about that man so, oh my god dude so let's just you know it we're was gonna, we're gonna put any names out here I, I've, I've asked people to do no, that. we're not gonna do any names but i'll, I'll just put it to you simply right. like it, it was not a healthy dynamic and i'm a yeah. helper right so I, I see know. someone struggling i want to help them yeah however i didn't have the tools or the technology and i wasn't even good myself like right. this whole time i'm still emotionally distressed from my life right, right yeah 
So I'm making mistakes. I'm aligning with the wrong people. I'm around people that are doing drugs and alcohol. And yeah. the relationship was so dramatic. Like if I told you what it was, you'd be like, that's not even real. Like it was like, almost swim fan level insanity yeah wow wow yeah. you know so, i see you and i see bradley cooper i see this like high energy guy you actually remind me of my older brother a little bit who yeah. i lost to drugs who then that's part of the reason why i was just like oh i gotta have this guy on to kind of just like inspire people who kind of maybe get into a whole drug fast lifestyle not feeling anything gotta they don't want to feel stuff. And that's why people, people don't do drugs to be a drug addict. They do it because they don't want to feel something, right? You know, I never did drugs. You know, I, I was never, I never got caught up in any of that stuff, yeah, thankfully, that's good. despite yeah. all this insanity. But so everything took a nosedive. Like I was mm -hmm. so, I got out of that relationship and I yeah. was so emotionally distressed. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't work. I was having panic attacks, emotional breakdowns. Like there was some serious abuse in here. Yeah. And there was no support for men who yeah. go through that. Yeah. Like I would call people and they'd laugh at me and hang up on me. So yeah. what the hell? Yeah. So it, it just drove me all the way down to complete homelessness in Los Angeles. At oh. that point, I reached out to an organization and I'll try to get through this as quick as I can, but, no, this is um, good. and I didn't know that they were in the Caribbean and uh -huh. they were like, well, why don't you come down here, change your thing, do all this. Like I had $400 to my name sleeping in my car in LA wow. and they're like, yeah, come down. We'll give you a job. You can do what, some what, what type of car. It was a, it was a Hyundai Sonata. A oh, nice. Hyundai. I almost bought one of those. Yeah. Right. I was like my car, but it's so beat up. The windows didn't work. It was a yeah. mess. So you can um, live in it. You can go from living in a car to where you are now. So for anybody yeah. listening, go ahead. Oh, it gets worse though. It gets worse. We're, oh, not, okay. we're not through it yet. So, <laughs> wow. so we're not through the bad yet. So yeah. it's bad. Uh, so you, you have panic attacks, emotional distress, can't yep. work, can't function like crying and breaking down any, every given moment. And there was just like no way out. So this girl was like, yeah, come down, work with us. So I sold my car for 300 bucks. I got rid of everything. And I just had my suitcase, my laptop and my camera, which I still have. I still have that camera. Well, what camera you got? It's a, it's a what Canon camera? 5D Mark II. Okay. Yeah, I know. Bro. I've got other stuff now, but I, yeah. I, that's like, right, that was your baby. I get it. Dude. I, I know. I used to be a creator too and do video editing. So I totally yeah. know that. So, so then I flew to Trinidad and Tobago. I flew halfway around the world with no money oh and it just continued to get worse. Like I was, I was doing stuff for no money. I wasn't eating. I was now, sleeping. Who hard was with this who asked you to come fly with them from LA to Trinidad or who it was, was that? A, it was just a, a person who was attempting to give me a hand and help me out. Like okay. they, they ran, um, you know, they, they dealt with situations like this down yeah. there and they were like, okay. well, why don't you just change your environment and come gotcha. work? Okay. Good. And so that didn't work out. And yeah. I remember I wasn't getting paid. And I told them one day, because I was in the main city, they were a little bit up the road. And I'm like, I'm not coming into work today. I lied. You know, that yeah. wasn't very good. Right. <laughs> what I did was I went and I started knocking on all of the ad agency doors looking for work. Yeah. So here's, here's an American in somewhat of a depression wow. country. Oh, my God. And I'm like... Hey, do you guys need someone to promote? Like, what, what can I do to help you? And so they found out about that, fired my ass, and now I was on the street in another country with no money and no oh way to get <laughs> Dude, oh my God, dude. I, I could no not. Clue. Yeah, think about that for a second. Think about um, being in another country where you're actually the, the minority, yep. and not that there's anything wrong with that, but, <clears throat> and you can't get home. Yeah, it's just tougher. Yeah. So thankfully, my friend, knew a guy who had a kind of like a radio shack type of thing. Yeah. He gave me a job and um, I said, I will just, whatever you need me to do, I will just do it. And mm -hmm. so I started designing graphics for his Facebook page. I started doing videos of his shop. Like I'm talking a rinky dink shop, dude. Like, right. This is and you did more. You went to one job and did more than what was required of it. Yeah. 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 And I, and I started making money and I was like, Oh my God, I can actually eat. I can buy new clothes. Okay. This is cool. So by the end of that, my, um, my visa had expired and I had to come back to the U S and, um, he's like, okay, I'll send you to Miami. Um, there's a job for you there. And, um, you know, you'll at least get back and you'll have some work. So I came back, did the job, but it wasn't enough money. And I lived in a hostel on ocean drive for three months in a room with six other people that constantly changed all the time. We all shared one room, one bathroom. Where, where Everybody was else the, where was the ocean drive? Where was this? In South beach, Miami. South, okay. So you came back and then was in a hostel guy. Yeah. 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 So, so 
So I had a hundred dollars a week allowance um, in South Beach and I was still doing work for him. And it was just like, I was like, how the hell did I end up here? Like, this is terrible. Like I came from a good, we had a good family. I went to a good school, but like my life was completely broken. But all the while I was still doing film stuff. And then, so finally I was like, all right, I wanted to, I needed a job. So I went and I got a job at Banana Republic that I hated. And, but I just, in my head was like, <clears throat> just do something. Just temporarily do something to make money. And then you can change. So I sucked it up and I did it. And then one day I was like, I'm so, and I finally got a room. I rented a room from a guy. And um, that was the first time I had my own space in like a year and a half, a shower and a quiet place. And I think I slept for five days straight. Wow. So now. Uh, how, how old were you then? When this was this, how long ago? 23. This? How old are you now? 31. Okay. Wow. I'm older. I'm 33. I'm 34. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. It was like 23, 24. Okay. So, so then I was about to go work at Best Buy and I was like, you know what? <clears throat> it's time I go get what I want. I want to do film. Mm -hmm. I want to do editing and I want to learn about business because I'm so good at production. I don't know how to do business. I literally said that out loud. I need right. to learn about business. Right. And then, um, so I went to the beach, thought about it. And then I came back and I went on Craigslist and it said, New York Times bestselling authors looking for a video genius to create content for him. And I was like, okay, I don't know who you are, but let's try it. So, so I said, that's video, how it happened. That's, and that's how it happened. So after all this, sh so you said you sent an interview video back then. What you sent an interview video, like a 60 second video. Yeah, I still have that video too. Uh, that that would be cool, man. We should probably get that for uh, the 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 trail at the end. Watch at the end there, man. Yeah, I still have it too. It's really funny. Oh, yeah. um, and then I went in and I was like, Grant was there. I was like, Hey, he was like, Hey. And then I met with uh, Sherry, and then I had the job in three days, and then I just took off. Like I planted my feet, and I learned. And I, I, I mean, I would stay. There were nights where I would stay till like twelve o'clock, one o'clock in the morning. I didn't yeah. even ask to get paid. I was just like, yeah. I will work. Yeah. And I, I was like, that's the most important thing. I just want to be, I was thankful that I had a job. I was thankful that I could produce. Yeah. I was thankful. Like I went to bare basics, dude. I was like, did I brush my teeth? Did I take a shower? Did I buy new clothes? Am I taking, like, cause that's all I had. So right. I just started here right. and then I expanded. So, so, but Grant was a pretty steady job. That had to be a pretty decent job to be in after all that, right? Yeah, I mean, it was, um, it was very different. I hadn't ever experienced that, you yeah. know? It, it wasn't quite, I couldn't classify it as your typical corporate experience because it wasn't. I don't think it still is, man. It's, no, it's, it's in the it never was. And I'm actually, I'm thankful that it, that it wasn't because I probably would have been fucked. Oh, I probably would have been bored and I would have just left. Right. Um, so I like a lot of action. I like speed. I like, you know, learning and I like doing things and, and, and really... <clears throat> what that had enabled me to, to get as an artist was combining um, the process of sales and business as an artist. Yeah. And I remember there was a moment where I was like, Hey, I'd like a raise. And they're like, no, you need to go sell something. And I was like, okay. So I started to sell my video stuff to the clients that we had. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, dude. And, and I was afraid to do it. Cause I was like, well, if I sell, I'm going to lose my artistic ability. Right. And I'm like, ah, so that there was a block there. But then when I did it, I discovered it actually made my artistic ability a hundred X better mm -hmm. because I could take a business viewpoint and a conservative viewpoint and I could make it look cool as hell. Yeah, no, you could, man. Cause I actually called you up. I think that's how we called. <laughs> I actually, during that time I, I put in for a request meant to do Cardone advertising or Cardone media. I think it was, or something like that. And you were the one taking the call on the sales call with it. And that's how we got into it. I was the only sales guy doing that. Yeah. Cause you were selling, you were selling yourself, you know, you were selling that side. You knew the most of it because Grant's team and where he's, dude, he's speaking. I just had my buddies out there in um, Arizona. He's speaking there with a whole bunch of people. He's not where he's at now back then. Right. Um, or was it, was he still, I mean, he's he blown up a little bit more. By the time the ad agency came around yeah. to like full fruition, we were really, it was really like taking off. Mm -hmm. um, but at the beginning there, I mean, it was just like, it was him and it was me. And yeah. we just created yeah. all day, thousands of hours of content.
mm-hmm. all the time. And I never asked him anything. Like I never was, I never like picked at him. I never, oh, I yeah. never like took yeah. anything. I just yeah. learned. Yeah. And I but thought you, that, that was really important. I, di- I didn't want to be that guy who's like, tell me everything. Like I just was like, yeah, yeah. I, it's on, I'm getting paid to learn. Like I really took that as a, as a, as an opportunity, right? Because I was like, I'm helping him, but I'm learning everything. So yeah, so and that's the best way to do it for people. Like right now, I'm working for a guy, JC Tanati, a local multimillionaire, really nice guy. Reminds me of Grant at just learning the sales and business process. I came at that's what I do on the weekends. I do this here, right? And I think to anybody too, just by by doing, you can even observe you're smart enough. That stuff principles you can bring on anywhere you go, right? Yeah, yeah. I just absorbed and absorbed and absorbed and absorbed, and then I would practice, and then I would make calls. Like I would do all my work for him, and then I'd call. And the only reason I made that work was because I got results. Yeah. I would bring, I'd be like, here's 20 grand, here's 40 grand, here's a hundred grand, blah, blah, blah. You know? And, and it would just be, that's at least that's my viewpoint. Right. I don't know what the other viewpoint was. I know what my viewpoint was. And I was like, I'm delivering on multiple levels here. Like yeah. I went from being a video dude to a weapon. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so, okay. Now let's uh, not to, because I didn't want to get too caught up in that, but that was just cool to see. So at what point were you started to use the money principles to bank cash so you could start at your own? Or was this just kind of a thing that you were just always like? You know what? I didn't really. Because was that the most money you started making when you started working there? Oh, yeah. I made, yeah. I made, yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, it's, you know. By comparison, I mean, it's, yeah, it's you went from Trinidad out on the street, so I know, didn't we're really like, caring too much. But you know, where, like, like I said, you know, you're it, finally in a good vehicle. I was in a good vehicle. I had a good life. Um, I was a worker, and I was just into it. So what ended up happening was, um, so I'm a Scientologist, and as I was going doing my training and learning, I, I my awareness and my viewpoint came up. Like I started to see things differently. And I realized that I remember like I was doing 200, 300 calls a day. Like I was totally out of creation. Mm -hmm. I was in sales and I was having a team and doing all that stuff, which I loved. It was great. Right. But I remember um, I was sitting there one day and I said, oh, I'm an employee. Right. Oh, okay. Why am I an employee? And there's not that I'm knocking people who are employees, but me personally, right. Didn't I was actually off. by being an employee invalidating what I actually should be doing. Right. It was almost as if I was holding myself in a position as opposed to running where I'm supposed to go. Yeah. And I would come home, dude. I would come home at night. I'd cry. I'd be upset. I'd be like, I don't know what to do. This is really like, it was a really anguished decision it sounds like me right now man so I, I can relate you know with Dude, it problems. was it was like it was because i loved where i was and i loved creating everything there yeah. were some things that i was like well we could do better but you know <clears throat> it was a tough call it was a yeah. very tough call so let's, let's- i was so invested like I, I was like man i i've done so much yeah and then so- i was like you know what i gotta go take the risk I got to go do this and I might piss some people off. Some people may not agree with this. Some people like, I I remember I told a friend of mine, I was like, Hey, I'm, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm leaving. And they were like, you're stupid. I was like, you're probably right, but I got to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, you're making the most money. You're connected. You're this, you're that. And I'm like, that's right. But it's not mine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I totally agree. That that. right there, that last piece is what I had a problem with. Yeah. It wasn't mine. Yeah, but you're a that, guy. I'm not saying that to be rude. Yeah. I'm saying it from a personal integrity viewpoint of like, I want to create my own thing. I want my control. And that's, yeah. and I think that's what entrepreneur, that's why business owners and entrepreneurs exist. They have that. I want to create my thing. I want yeah. to help people my way. You right. know, you yep. do it your way. Yep. It works for you. Good for you. Thank you very much for the opportunity and everything. Like it was amazing, but here we go. And I worked like, dude, I worked right up to six o'clock on the last day. Yeah. I was trying to close deals. I was servicing my clients. I built a 12 hour training program on how to do my job 
in wow. video. Wow. I wrote up everything about what I did and I built like a 55 hour program on advertising. And when I left and I wow. said, Hey, here's my two week. Here is everything on how to do my job. Yeah, God, right. Wow. All you wow. have to do is put them through this and you're good to go. Wow. And that was that. And here I am one What's year it? later. Uh, it's only been a year. It feels like so long. So wait, so Johnny, the camera guy and all Nate, they weren't there when you were there, right? Oh, they were. Only, yeah, no, I, I, I brought, uh, I remember I went to them and I was like, guys, I need help. <laughs> so I, I interviewed a bunch of people and then yeah. Johnny came through and I was like, I like Johnny. Dude, I love Johnny. Johnny's still cool. And then, awesome. um, and you then hired him? Johnny. So then me and Johnny were going so and we're like, that's the we need help. And we got Francisco. And yeah, I, was like, I know Francisco. He's cool so. too, man. Yeah. So there's yeah. all a bunch of, that's crazy. So that's why their team's so strong is because of you hiring these dudes. Well, I didn't have the final say, but like yeah, I was involved and I was like, yeah. I, I just watched and I was like, these guys are awesome. You yeah. know? No, they are, they are awesome. They're, those are the guys when I'm down at the Grants Can X stuff. So just, and you touched on Scientology. I don't know how much you want to uh, speak on it. I don't want to turn into all that. But one thing that fascinates me, like I'm a Jesus guy, right? And mm. I tell everybody that, you know, I believe in the Lord and all that, even after my brother at Challenge. But I read some books um, that helped me out. One you told me to read. Uh, I think it was Problems of Work. And there's all the books. Scientology gets a bad rap. When people bring it up, it's like a trigger word, right? And Grant, the reason why I love Grant is I think he does it in the coolest way possible where he brings out, he's like, you can be whatever, man. It just helps me out, right? It just helps me to think. Now, when, did that come up in your interview process? Like, did you know Grant was a Scientologist when you were interviewing the first at a time? Or did that happen after to become a Scientologist? Or? It was after. Everything that I have experienced in my yeah. life, basically, yeah. from when I started Scientology to now, yeah. Um, my happiness, yeah. my ability to build a business, my ability to sell better, my yeah. ability to have better friendships, yeah. my ability to, to spot and fix situations is 100%. My income, yeah. all of that is 100% attributable to what I learned in Scientology. Like it has, yeah. and I was struggled, man. Yeah. I had anxiety, I had yeah. depression, yeah. and I had issues, and I don't have any of that. I have yeah. happiness. I, I've never been happier, actually. I'm yeah. happy every single day. I'm very stable. My income is stable and going like this all the time. Yeah. And I'm just creating. Like, it just gave me the rocket fuel I needed. It was like I knew I could do it, but I didn't know what it was that was like letting me not run. And then I found what it was and I was like, oh, and now I can run. So, um, yeah, well, the, the, use, just the way I think Grant's a really smart guy, the, the Hubbard dude is really smart too, man. You read those books and you're just like, whoa, you know, just put stuff in a different perspective that, that we all know, but until you like, logic. Kinda, it's logic. That's what it is kind of, you know? So me being a Jesus guy, which is not logic, right? Believing in, you know, the Lord and praying and all that, it almost brings the logic sense to that, you know? Yeah. Well, it's just, again, it, it's, it's, you know, Scientology is about helping you understand yourself and understanding everything else around you and you in relation to all those things. And, um, that's, you know, it's the biggest gift that I could ever have. And that's what led me to build my company. That's what led me to get all these clients. That's what's led me to travel the world. I mean, I was in Australia for, for a month, uh, earlier this year, I'm going to LA, uh, at the end of the month to go speak with Albert Preciado and Bobby Castro and Brad Lee and oh, nice. oh, Daniel yeah, that's, Fleischman that's and, right. uh, Brent, Rondi Lambeth were speaking at Driven. Like yeah. I would have never been able to do that four or five years ago. Oh, so you're going to be at Driven for or the boot camp? The boot camp. Oh, the business boot camp. speaking on business and creative and all that side, right? I'm talking about promotion, communication, and marketing, the way to do it, how to do it, why you should do it this way the wrong things that are being done, the right things that should be done, everything that I've learned basically since NBC Universal to yeah. now. Yeah, everything. wow. The good so, and the bad. So what's, what's one of the things that you think um, is like, uh, not to give it all away, but one of the things that you think is the wrong way people, you see a lot of companies, everybody's now a media company, everybody's putting videos out, your Sissel Ventures, you're, what, what's different about you? What do you see that people are doing wrong that's kind of different? My biggest problem that I saw was just that just because somebody of, great stature is doing it doesn't make it right. Right. So I'm going to take what I think is right from somebody else and try to apply that to my business and act like that person and try to duplicate that is just illogical to me. Right. Because right. when I see it, I'm like, well, you're just like this guy. So why am I going to do business with you? So my job as a person in promotion is really, where are you? And what do you have to say? And how can we say that? 
for me, marketing and promotion, 80% of that is communication. 20% is the actual mechanical delivery, your videos, your posts, your ads. 20% is the mechanical. 80% is what you're saying, how it's being said, and then how is that being received from the other side? And when this is out or wrong, this doesn't work. That's why people are like, advertising sucks. Right, because you're not doing it correctly. You're focused on this thing instead of this thing. Right, everybody goes for the money punching grab, save this off, do this, but it's really people connect with who you are. Uh, We just partnered with a Rebel Interactive Group Media Group and they did exactly uh, like what you said, right? They brought out what the person was to expose it what's different and not every other company that brought this company and tried to make them like the rest, you know? save this on windows if that's the deal right so do you work with uh, like companies or you work with brad lee i saw you have vt lights yeah, so brad's my client right now working with him on a few things bobby castro's my client um i work with high 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 end business owners and entrepreneurs yeah. i work with businesses i work with influencers i mean yeah. the mechanics and principles of what i deploy with my clients are the yeah. same whether you're worth a 150 million, 500 million, or your company's going to do half a million dollars this year. It's the same. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that was the beautiful thing about what Scientology allowed me to do. It was like, how can I be of service with my knowledge and information to the marketplace with everything that I know and not push people away? Right. So I'm not limited by anything. I can, yep. I can go anywhere any place, any company, whatever it is. The only place I don't play with is uh, pharmaceuticals, yeah. uh, CBD, um, yeah, anything with marijuana. I don't. Oh, yeah, good. Me, me and you can rock, dude. That one of the questions I always ask people, and I stopped asking because I had seven figure, you know, honors in it. Do you do drugs? Did you do drugs? And I, do you do drugs? And do you do Grant Cardone? I used to ask these questions all the time. Because if you knew Grant Cardone, I could rock with you. You didn't do drugs. I wasn't gonna give you any money or help you out because I lost my brother to drugs. And I just feel it slows you down from your full potential. You know. Uh, right. And I was just very strong in that. So it's just cool to hear you take that side. There was a question I was going to ask when you actually um, brought up. So Bradley, and I think he has a great platform. He's going to be on. I think we're interviewing him next week. Uh, big fan of him. Um, what's, um, shoot, what was the question I was asked? What, what's one thing that you um, like saw that, like how you're helping these big influencers out? What, what's the one thing similar how you helped out Grant Cardone kind of? like that similar same style or are you like, are you just doing like, are you advertising his VT light speed? Is it just you or do you have multiple people helping you? So I have teams. I have, I have, I have about uh, six people that work with me right now. Oh, nice. um, the, the idea is it depends on what's going on. Each client's going to be a little bit different. Some people right. are like, I have these ideas. I don't know what to do. And I like, good, this is where we're going to go. Or they already have everything. And I'm like, we're going to fine tune this and remake it. So it looks a little bit more cohesive and makes sense. Or they're like, I need more content to deliver. Can you help me with that? Absolutely. I'll deliver that content for you every single month. Or, hey, my website's not working properly. I don't think it describes who we are very effectively. And then I'll help them with that. So my whole thing is centered around that communication and message development. And then using these other ideas like videos and graphics and web design and emails and all that to distribute that information. Uh, That's awesome. So do you think more uh, where we're going? Because we are going in very trendy fast. Uh, cause I've kind of made a thing, w- website or landing pages. Do you think landing pages are taking over websites cause of the time stuff? No. Do you think you can still kind of get build something to build someone who they are for a brand? Yeah. Yeah. All right. That, 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 that's good. Just cause it was the one thing that me and, uh, me and another marketer were talking about at our site. So, um, I look at it all as resources. It, yeah. it, I don't, I'm not like, ugh, ugh, I need like, it's not like a yeah. thing. It's just another thing for me. That's right. all it is. Yeah. So, so going in, so the first day you left to being an entrepreneur, going out to make more money, you leaving a nice, comfortable job working with Grant on your own, getting your first client, was that hard to do? Did you have that? Like, cause that's where uh, I, I've done, done that multiple times with certain businesses or is it like someone you knew or what would you <laughs> say someone who's just starting out on their own kind of right there? I'm going to just say this. If you're going to do it. Okay. Let me take it back. So, it was really hard, actually. Yeah. That first like six months was really like, cause you're coming from kind of like, it's almost like you left the military and you're like, what the hell do I do now? Right. So, so you had this really like structured employee mental, mental attitude. And then you went to freedom. 
Yeah. You went yeah. to like, whoa, this is like, I could do this. Oh, I could sleep till 10. Oh, I could go to the beach. Oh, I could, you know. Yeah, so it's going to be it's, tough down there in South Beach too. It's easy in rainy Connecticut here. Yeah, well, I mean, I live on, I'm literally looking at the ocean right now. It's gorgeous. I know, that's um, insane, dude. The, uh, the thing is, is that I had to basically create my own structure to make things work. Yeah. So, but, but, but the problem was, is that, you know, I, I, I attempted to try to build something that was really outside of my field of expertise mm -hmm. and I lost a lot of money. I lost a lot of time and I, I, I got, I lost it. And, um, I thought I wasn't going to be able to have my apartment or my car or anything that I had worked so hard for. Like, and, and, um, you know, it, it, it is what it is. It's just, you know, I was like, Hey, this just isn't working. I can't do that. I need to go back to something else. Well, what was it you tried to build? Cause like now I'm like, Oh well, man, it's just I like a technology to... thing. That's all yeah. it really was. And yeah. so what ended up happening was, is it just didn't work. And, um, so I, I, I found myself basically on the, the edge of re-experiencing homelessness again. Like I was right. right I wasn't there, uh -huh. but I was close enough. Okay. And, um, so I, what I did was I went in and I got, I got really all my ethics right. I just checked everything. I'm like, okay, what works? What doesn't work? What am I doing that I shouldn't be doing? What am I doing that I should be doing? Like, like what, what are all these things? And I started to analyze everything that I know. And then I said, all right, cool. So what can I do to save my life at this moment? Now it's just survival. Now it's like, good, I need to pay my rent. Like that's right. how my, that's how Cislo Venture started. Okay. A quick survival play. Wow. And um, the, what first am I client, the first client I had um, was a referral and I went through my phone book and I just started calling people because, you know, I, I couldn't do business with, you know, so I was like, all right, what am I going to do? So I'd ask people for referrals. All right. And um, this one guy I connected with, uh, we talked and I closed. He's still my client today. We talk every day. Uh -huh. He's an awesome guy. I do his marketing. I redesigned his whole brand. He's a gynecologist and obstetrician out of Dallas, Texas. Oh, nice. And um, I create content for him every single month and manage his websites and help him with his marketing. Um, anyway, and so that was my first client. And that's then, awesome, dude. That's once crazy. I got the first guy and, that, and, and I charged my rent, <laughs> right, yeah. I was like, this is how much it costs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so then I was like, good, I'm going to make a package out of that. Good. Yeah. And then it just kind of like, once you get one, yeah. you just start, you just don't stop. So at that point I was like, good, we're back. So I, I delivered it. Yeah. I worked till 2 a.m. I got another guy. I worked till 2 a.m. Got another guy. I worked till 2 a.m. And that's all I did for like 90 days. I just like got it in and then just put it away. Got it in, put it away, got it in, put it away. <clears throat> to the point where I was like, okay, now I'm good. I'm out of the hole. And now I can focus on expansion and that's what I'm doing now. So I did that. So the first six months was like this. And then the second six months was like, whoo. Yeah. And that's basically where I just, you know, the amount of money I made in six months, I basically made, I made like four times my entire yearly salary, my last year working at the last job in wow. five months. That's a, and what would you credit that to? Just honing in on your skills and kind of just going to work? Would it be Scientology? Would it be, what would it be? Oh, sorry, I lost you here. Your audio. Right. I think it was that was me. I credit it to Scientology. Uh, I credit it to, I started taking these courses that were very focused on business. Mm -hmm. And because I was like, I feel like there's some information that I was given that was incorrect and I need to get that cleared up. Uh -huh. And so once I cleared that up, the path just opened up, right? right yeah. So the first thing that I do is if something isn't working, I start looking for certain indicators in, the, in my universe that I need to handle immediately. Like I don't let it go either. It's right. like the same day, immediate thing. Like, right, okay, yeah. why did that deal not close? What happened? Who, what, what did I do? Who's around me? What ha like, like I'm, cr I'm, an, I'm, I'm a crazy like guy about that. I'm always just like watching. You sound like Grant now. <laughs> yeah. And then I would, then I protected my attention. What do I mean yeah. by that? I blocked, I don't look at anyone on social media. Yeah, good. I watch no one. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. I don't. I'm on social media and I have teams that help promote me on right, social yeah, media, yeah. but I do not take advice from anybody anymore. Yeah. I take it from one source and that's Scientology, but I don't take advice from anybody else. 
Yeah, because you get too clouded from everybody, you know, people tell that, you. And sometimes the information is wrong. And, right. even, and it could come from people of high positions and it could be wrong. So mm -hmm. I was yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to make, like, I got real clear and I'm going to make my own choices and decisions. And then I grew a multi, you know, grew a very, <laughs> very high end six figure business in five months. So, uh, I know. I can tell you. Do you so yeah, how do you meet Albert? How do you link up with Albert if it wasn't, was it through social media or? Well, actually, you know, I met Albert at, uh, we, he went to Grant's 10X event in Cancun back in like 2015. Gotcha. Yeah. He was just starting out. Yeah. And we stayed friends and then, you know, we, I sold him some content and promotion stuff a couple of years ago. And then, uh, you know, once my one year of, you know, this was up, I called him and I just said, Hey man, I wanted to get back in contact with you and just see how I could help. And I, and he was telling me about his event. I was like, bro, I would love to be there. And he's like, come on, let's go. And okay. so it was just a beautiful thing. We got a cool exchange thing happening in on that. Um, but yeah, so it, I just, I just stayed and maintained relationships with everybody. I just was like, I stayed relevant and I communicated. Yeah. No, which is huge. No, I remember Albert before he's where he's at. Now he has his own events. He's had three events from them. I like, I connect uh, to a lot of people back in the day, social media. Now I've honed down a little bit more. Sure. And not too far. That's off market that I talked to one of the guys that I tell him, he's like in two years, if you have X amount of money, you can buy it. So that's one of my goals. But, so we'll see. So I might be down there soon. But um, money tips. What's the best money tip for maybe like a young starting entrepreneur like me? I'm raising capital, opening a software business. What's a good money, money tips tip? in relation to what? Uh, to, to basically an entrepreneur just starting out, kind of. Yeah, I mean, you know, expect to spend money. Expect yeah. that you might need to spend more. Like, you know, when I did it, I tried to think about every possible opportunity or problem that could happen. Mm -hmm. Not that they would happen, but you know, like prepare, yeah. you know, make sure your house is covered. Make sure you got money for food. If you're just starting out, just really just try to have a stack there just to give you a little bit of like, okay, I'm not dying and mm -hmm. I'm going to be okay. And then, I mean, once you start making money, Re either reinvest that into your personal development to make yourself better, invest that in employees, which is what I've been doing lately, and invest that into marketing. Awesome. Right now, I'm in hyper growth. So 2020 for me is just all about good. I need 10, I need a staff of 15 people. We got to get our, you know, everything brought together. Um, I will probably do about 2 million this year in 2020 Damn, based wow. on my projections of what's happening, but it's a projection, which doesn't mean anything. Right. But that's still done. But if you follow what I've been doing on a trend and you look at the trend, both by weekday and uh, quarter and year and half a year, you're like, well, there's really only one place that's going to go. So, um, yeah. yeah wow. So, so money advice is really just, I don't spend money. I don't go out. I don't buy like, yeah, I bought that car, but like, it's nothing, you know, like it's right. really no money. And, um, but I'm not going to go, I could go get a Ferrari or an Aston Martin right now, but I'm not right. going to do it. Yeah, it was um, stupid, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I'm very logical with my money. The only way you buy that is to impress somebody. Really? That's really what it is, right? I mean, it's nice uh, to drive. I mean, that's my promotion, dude. Go like, around my promotion is, I, I, you know, I was talking to one of my clients and they were afraid to promote because they didn't have a Ferrari or a plane. And I was like, that's totally the wrong yeah. Like, like nobody should ever feel that invalidated on right. because of what's happening on social media ever. Like yeah. if I'm always like, look, if you've got a good product, you're ethical, you actually can help people. Everybody started somewhere. Yeah. You yeah. know? So, so if you just come at it from that viewpoint of helping, like, like you can't go wrong because you really, have yeah. to just, you know? So, yeah. um, yeah. But anyway, so back to the money, money tips, I would just say, if you're just starting out, get a cushion in. Don't like cut all spending. Like don't spend anything more than what you need to survive. Yeah. You no, know, don't go out. Like you'll survive. You've got Netflix. Like you will live. You don't need to go do things, you know, like it's a temporary like whoop, to expand and then you can have your freedom, you know, like, and that's, that's what I did. And that's worked really well for me. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I made a lot of money in sales just recently and I started spending it on my software and I was like, you know what? And I started maybe going out and like talking about money and I was like, you know what? Let me just tight down and actually learn. All right, so when you were young, you know, going through divorce, the whole thing, um, young kid, 
did you think you'd be here where you're at now? Like what, anything you trained you for, do you ever look back and be like, wow? Yes, I did. Dude, I'm looking at it right now with you telling me, being like, wow, like this is crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I, you know, I didn't know what it looked like, but yeah. I knew that it would be something. Yeah. I you always knew- had that, like, it's come, like I knew it mm-hmm. with certainty. I just yeah. didn't know what it would look like. And yeah. it looks pretty damn good. Yeah, dude, I looks- still, like, I'm not even considering this as like, I got more to do. Yeah, no, I know. This is, that's why I'm glad I got you on now because I could see the trend you went on. Did you do your own website on Cicelo Ventures? Yeah, I could tell because it has that great ingenious touch to it. It looks amazing. So, guys, um, well, let me, let me get through these questions and we'll put where they can find more of you. But best relationship advice. This is something I struggle with right now. Um, kind like of. what kind? Friendship? Well, well, even business partnership. Just recently, I got a business partnership advice too. Mm-hmm. But what relationship too? Girls, man, I'm I'm too jealous when it comes to girls. I usually like the Spanish girls, and they dress like crazy. And then when you're dating them, it's not as fun, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to let's just you know whatever it is, I always <clears throat> I don't. Well, listen. You're you're not married, right? No, uh, I don't listen to. You save a lot of money there. Uh, I don't listen to what is being said Mm -hmm. i look at what is there what do i mean i look at what is in front of me so if somebody's like well i did this and i did that and i'm blah 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 blah, and i'm this and i'm that good show me right i need to see it i need the proof otherwise now i know i'm dealing like if you're lying to me and you're not acting um then i know that you're not somebody that i want to associate with. And I, I'm very strict on those things, like super strict. You have to be. Um, and that's something that, cause I love people. I love talking to people. I I, I really do. And, um, sometimes though, there's just, you got to have some non-negotiable things in your space and you got to be like, you know, you have to define what those are. Um, for me, I'm like, if you say you're going to do it, you do it. Um, if you're, You know, if you said that you did something, I expect you to show me that you did it. Um, I need, like, I don't take face value things. I don't take words. I don't take ideas. I don't take concepts. I take visible, tangible things that I can work with. And do I translate that to relationships? I absolutely do. Like, I want to see how do you live? What's your house look like? What's your car look like? Mm-hmm. How do you take care of yourself? What do you eat? Where do you go? What do you do on the weekends? You know, right. I look at all that right. and all of that gives me information. Uh, wow. right? So I'm con and it sounds maybe, I don't know. I don't know if everybody agrees with me on that, but for me it works. And right, no, it sounds smart. I don't tolerate much. Like I don't tolerate if something goes wrong and it's pretty like I've tried to handle it a few times. It's a very quick cycle. It's just like, that's enough. I'm done. Like well, yeah. This. And one thing I've learned, especially through Grant and everything, it's your life. You get to pick who you want in the journey with. If you surround people who are negative or whatever the word you want to put on it, or whatever they do, it's going to start affecting you, you know? Yeah. But I also look at, you know, I also look at, you know, I look at people who tell, like say things about, like if somebody was to look at my life right now, they would be like, who's around you? Or like, how do you live my life? And you would see exactly what I'm talking about. So. Um, you would see what I have and what I do and how I operate. And that's what I promote. So, you know, when it comes to relationships, the same thing, it's like, where are you going? What are your goals? Do you, are you productive? Are you, how do you help people? Do you help people? Do you want to help people? Like what is, you know, what is your purpose? What is your purpose for talking? You know, and then I look at what people say, like that's, this is huge. Here's like the biggest one. And then you can ask me the next one is, um, you know, I look at how people talk. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, did that make me feel good? Or did that make me feel bad? Right. If it made me feel good, I'd be like, why did you say that to try to make me feel bad? Right. What's the purpose uh, of that? Yeah. Why would I want to keep you around? Why would I be connected to you? And so basically, if I'm not there, if people are gone, there is a reason. And it's based on those things I just told you. Oh, I'm going to end my life. Goodbye. That, that's huge. Because no, there's actually so many people who, uh, I was homeschooled, right? And everybody was all nice. I was in my 
tight little community. When I went out there, people were a lot like mean. And I was just like, man, I don't get it. Nobody you know? taught me that though, man. Yeah. Nobody, nobody, no, you know, it's, yeah, no, that's, 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 that's really, that's not good. I hope that, I hope that answers your question. No, that was good. And I would follow up to that because so, so what's your why of what you do then? What, I mean, obviously it's to help people, but like, I, and I love, got, man, I got to tell you, I love, I love helping business owners or people communicate. I, I really learned how to do that. I love to take their ideas, their, their passions and their concepts and show them how we can portray that through design and creativity and, and not just like, not, and we're not talking about like, you know, finger painting and things like that. We're talking about, you know, video and promotion. Now, right. if there was a finger painter that I'm working with, like there's a way to do that too. But right. I have a, I, I absolutely love right. um, that, that, that journey from we're here. These are the ideas. Let's put it together and then fire it. Like yeah. this cycle is so much fun for me because it's creation and yeah. I get to see an instant response. Yeah. And they're like, like I was talking to a client the other day and they were like, yeah, our engagement's down on our social media. And I looked at how they were talking and I'm like, you're assuming that we all know what you're talking about. Yeah. Don't talk like that. Let's yeah. just tweak it a little bit. Let's just say your experience. Let's just say what you discovered and why you discovered it. He booked seven appointments off one post. It was amazing. Wow. That's awesome. So, so uh, before I get to where we can find more of you, um, changes in the education system. So Grant told me you're never going to change the education system. Uh, so anytime people tell me I don't do something, I do it. I think that's the life of an entrepreneur. I've surrounded myself with a lot of other young kids who really are very passionate about this. What's one change you think we could do in the education system? Practicality. Just more practical stuff that we need to be like, teaching. Like, like what do I need to know to really succeed? You know, like if yeah. they were going to do it, yeah. if, if, if you were like, Robert, what could you change? I would say, all right, how do we change education on money? Mm -hmm. Like, let's just start with money. Yeah. And I would be like, okay, let's talk about work ethic. And then let's talk about employment. Let's talk about business. Let's talk about like, I would change it in a way that it's actually easy to understand and able to be introduced and applied very simply. That's how I would do it. Yeah. And there's uh, a great school that's doing that. Yeah. Uh, Ron Hubbard actually has its, uh, it's, he's got a, he's got a course called student hat, student which is hat. just like, it teaches you. It's, it's basically what I'm talking about. It teaches right. you how to learn and it's, right. it's wonderful. Um, and then they have, uh, he has an applied scholastic school for kids as well, which does that. It teaches kids how to learn stuff. Right. I spoke at one of those schools actually here in Miami a couple months ago. It was great. Like those kids are so smart. Yeah. Wish I had that at their age, but that, yeah. you no, know, I, I would say that would be, you know, practicality. Like, how am I going to use this? Yeah. Okay, good. You're giving me calculus. Yeah. Great. <laughs> how do I use it? All right. Yeah. What is the function of you? And if it doesn't have function, why do I need to do it? Yeah. Well, that's why that's I how think. I think like if it's not immediately applicable to me, it's unnecessary added information in my world. I don't need, it's just yeah. wrong. Exactly. And it's more so, and we're all born different. We all have different strengths. Right. So I think it would be better if we allocated those strengths to people, which is why I, I wish, I dude, I wish somebody talked about entrepreneurship. I wish yeah. somebody was like, I know they finally just added to colleges, which are overpriced anyway. And as soon as someone, I say this on them, as soon as someone's in entrepreneurship class and they get halfway through the class, they drop out of college and start to realize, <laughs> wait a minute, this doesn't make money sense, right? <laughs> but anyway, all right. Um, Back to this damn loan I took out. <laughs> yeah, right? All right, so um, where can we find uh, more of you for everybody else? Oh, no, what's, what's something you're looking forward to? Wow. I'm looking for, I'm just looking forward to the game, man. I, I, I'm excited to meet more people. I'm excited to be able to go talk on stages. I look forward to waking up. Like I wake up, I go paddleboard in the ocean and then I get to work. Yeah. Right. I love that. I actually love waking up. I love Mondays. I love Saturdays. I love yeah. Sundays. Yeah. I love the people I'm going to meet. I love the, 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 the videos that I haven't created yet. The websites that I haven't built yet. The campaigns I haven't done yet. Like there's just so much. Yeah. You know? And well, we can dude. even go simpler than that, dude. Like tonight, I'll be able to sit on my balcony and listen to the sound of the ocean. Like yeah. I will look forward to that. Yeah, dude, know, that's just, awesome. Simple, you know, and then, you know, the free, like I had a really cool, like spiritual moment. I was flying to Australia. I was sitting in the airport. It was like two o'clock in the afternoon. 
and I had just come back. Mm-hmm. I had done a uh, 12 days or 11 days in Australia and I, and I came back home and then I turned around two weeks later and I went back and I was sitting in the airport and I said, wow, I'm actually free to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. Like that was a profound moment. Like I was sitting there. Yeah, I don't have a jet. Yeah, I'm not millions and millions of dollars rich, but you know what? It was Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock and I was getting on a plane to go back to surf more and build more business yeah. on a Tuesday. And I was like, wow, gorgeous. Yeah. And I was still working. Like, like, like that for me is what I look forward to, that experience and how much bigger can this get? Yeah, dude, that's awesome. Well, whatever I can do to make it get bigger uh, is awesome. So where can people find more of you if they want to hear about you, get in contact with you, book you? Yeah, so you could go to CicloVentures.com. Yeah. Um, you could check out my website. I'm Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, at Robert Cislo Jr. I just released my Seek Promotion Secrets Revealed course okay. on advertising and marketing. It's everything I know. Wow. It's 118 videos. It's $379. It's no money at all to get it. Yeah, yeah wow. It's uh, cislowventures.com forward slash secrets revealed. And it's just everything that I have done and learned and improved on. Um, Some of the stuff we talked about in this video uh, is contained in there as well. So if you're interested in that, um, that would probably be a great way to get introduced to what I've got going on. You'll, you'll see the viewpoint and the mentality and how that can help you. Dude, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm very impressed from going, talking to you on the phone when I was lost. And now I have a, LLC and I'm just I'm not you know I'm not there yet I'm gonna be working hard grinding you've brought so much value to me learned a lot um and yeah I'm, I'm excited to uh, see where Cisco Ventures goes in the future all right man thank you this is a lot to do thanks buddy I really appreciate it thank you right. everybody who listened